All right. I think. Check my mic. All right, exit. <laughs> I've made it habit to check if my mic is on or not. Um. Okay. Hello. Welcome in, everyone. Who do I see? I see Witchy, Cupcake for Thea, and Red Beast. Welcome in, everyone. Thank you for coming in early. Um, but hello, welcome everybody. Uh, today we're going to be going over balance, the principle of design, another part of our principles of design series. Um, so this one we're going to be talking about balance. This one's one of my favorites. It's one of, I think, the more important ones. Um, just in my own opinion, like unity is 100% the most <laughs> important one. We went on for that a couple weeks ago. Um, but balance I find is 100% one of my more important ones. Um, in my book anyway. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be talking about that. So uh, before we get started, if you've been here for a while, then you know the drill. Let's talk a bit about the studio. So if you did not know, our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together. So if you're an art nerd too, be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below. Oh, far one. <laughs> in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique, guidance, and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a YouTube channel. We're an art school too. So if you'd like to support us so we can keep making furry content, consider supporting us on Patreon for as little as $2 per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots. So be sure to check those out before they are gone. Okie dokie. Okie dokie, okie dokie. Let me check this again real quick. Oh, a bunch of different people. Um, hello, Carby, Drew, Riley, and Kenyon. Hello, welcome in. Hello, finally made it to a lesson. Yes, you did. Hello, welcome in. Um, wonderful. So we're going to be talking about balance. Um, like I mentioned, balance is one of my favorite things ever. It's like, it's so fun to play with. It's so fun to work with. So we'll talk a bit about that. So first of all, you know, also if it's your first time joining one of these streams, again, we start off with a lecture portion, which is going to be just about a whole lesson based off of the topic for the day. Um, and then we'll actually get into the illustration. Um, yeah, so let's get with, start with a definition. So what is balance? Balance. What is balance? Oh, the cursor's a little bit stranger today. Hello, Lone Wolf, welcome in. And hello, Space Weezer, welcome in. That's an, that's an, an excellent name. <laughs> welcome in. Hello, hello. So what is balance? Balance in art is the use of elements. Use of elements. I've not been on many streams, so I'm excited. Yes, yes, be excited. <laughs> of elements such as, actually, you know what? Use of, let's do this magic. The elements. Of art. in a piece to create visual stability. I might have to make my cursor a bit bigger. Um, so balance is the use of the elements of art in a piece to create visual stability. So if we think about it, oh, got a bunch of these. Hello from Italy, hello. And hello from nature's ambience, welcome in. So balance is the use of elements of art in a piece to create visual stability, right? So if you look at a piece, or right, you look head on to it, you kind of look at it, you usually feel like there isn't too much empty space in one spot, or if there is a lot of empty space and it doesn't feel like it's too heavy on one side, or if it's too, um, like if there isn't enough of it on another side, that's what balance is. Right, when you look at a piece, you can usually tell when it feels a little bit off. Say if I had kind of like something that looks like this, right? If I have like a sheet of paper in front of me, let's say that I have a little dude. Let's just say I got a little dude. He's my little gingerbread man. Uh, off season, yeah, sure, but. So let's say I got my little dude. Drawing him directly in the center, even though there's a lot of 
negative space around him, it still feels somewhat balanced because he's taking up just amount, just that right amount of space within that entire sheet. If I were to move him all the way down to the corner here, so then he gets kind of cut off like that. That feels more unbalanced because now I have all this space over here. It's not doing anything. It gets a little bit awkward to look at. So that's when it feels a little bit unbalanced. So often, you're just able to tell when something isn't balanced. Just by looking at it. I don't know why I can't download Medibang on my PC, so I have to use Krita. Yeah, Medibang, Medibang's great. It's just, it, it does get a little bit finicky sometimes. Make sure that you're downloading the correct version of Medibang, and whether it's 64 or 32-bit, um, and then you're going to have to run through a lot of things. If you get that pop-up window that says to download... Um, Visual C++, just say no, and it won't, it'll download perfectly fine. That's a window that a lot of people get. And if it says that, just say no, and it'll download just fine. So often you're able, you're just able to tell when something isn't balanced just by looking at it. A lot of the times, if you look at a piece, you can tell if it's balanced or not, because it won't feel awkward. It won't feel like things are placed a little bit odd. Right. And there are a lot of different ways to figure out if something is balanced. If you can't just kind of figure it out from it by yourself, because there are a lot of different types of balance and different types of balance. So let's say there's a lot of them. I'm gonna go over one, two, three, four, five of them. So there's many different types of balance. And they're often referred to as Oh, did I spell that wrong? Yeah, okay. Referred to as symmetry. So there are many, many different types of balance. We're gonna go over about four to five of them. And they're often referred to as zip referred to as symmetry, different kinds of symmetry. So let's go over them. Let's go over those symmetry thingies. I have a question about today's lesson. I have some problems with drawing the correct proportions on a human character. What can I do? We've talked about human proportions a while ago in the past. Today is going to be about balance. So that's the that's a principle of design, not necessarily proportion, which is actually another stream. <laughs> so that's not what we're going to be talking about today. But there is going to be a proportion stream, not necessarily with just human proportion, but with proportion in general. Um, so we will actually be going over that in a different stream, um, but there is different videos on human proportions and anatomy, which Daria can probably link for you. So yes, there's many different types of balance, which are often referred to as symmetry. So let's go over the first type of symmetry, which is what I consider the easiest one. It's symmetrical. Symmetri symmetrical and biaxial. Balance slash symmetry. Thanks for the answer. I'll check around. No worries. Um, hello, really appreciate the streams covering these more conceptual parts of art. Yeah, no worries. This is very, it is a very, it's a very theoretical portion of art. Um, and, you know, it's considered like the quote unquote basics of art, but not a lot of people actually study them. I've learned. <laughs> so glad to be here to help. Um, so we're going to be starting off with symmetrical and biaxial balance. You probably have heard this word, but maybe not this one. So symmetrical and biaxial balance, they're really similar. So I decided to group them together. Um, so when a piece...
is mirrored. Oops. Sometimes I forget. I have to click my space bar in order to use the, the move tool. <laughs> if folded. Perfectly in half. Both sides will perfectly. Overlap. Can be horizontal. Or vertical. Do you have any tips for starting a comic? I have seven chapters written, but my motivation sucks. I'll get to that after I talk about this portion. Um, so symmetrical and biaxial balance or symmetry is when a piece is mirrored. It's when a piece is mirrored. So if you took that piece and you folded it perfectly in half, either down the center, um, down the center, either vertically or horizontally, both sides will perfectly overlap with one another. All right. Um, it can be either horizontal or vertical. Right. So if you have your piece, you put a line directly down the center of it and you folded that piece in half, if you hold it up to the light or something, you should be able to see that it is mirrored exactly right on both sides. There's like almost no differences or no differences at all. And that tends to be perfect symmetry. And it can't be horizontal or vertical. If it's mirrored, both horizontally, And vertically, that's biaxial. Symmetry. So if it's one or the other, that's just perfect symmetry. That's just symmetrical balance or, symmet or symmetry. But if it's mirrored both horizontally and vertically, if you folded it into four squares and they all line up perfectly, that's biaxial symmetry. So if I drew them out for you in simple little little panels. Hello, Angie, welcome in. If I drew them out for you, perfect little panels. Let's so figure out one here. Let's pretend that these are gonna be like perfect because obviously I don't have a symmetry tool or something, so I'm gonna have to live with what I got. <laughs> like the paper bit easier, basically, kind of in a way. So if I had like, if it was split directly down the center, say if I had like one circle in the center. And then I had maybe like a small little, two small little circles up here. Two more bigger circles, or actually let's have them in the corner. So if we had like two bigger circles like this, and then maybe one giant circle here, maybe a tiny one, more tiny ones here. All right, this is, ver this is a, uh, just symmetry, right? Vertical symmetry. If you cut it directly down here, it'd be mirrored on both sides. So this is symmetry. Oh my god. Symmetry. But biaxial symmetry, let's say if I had my... There's one line going down this way, another one going down this way. All right. If I got my big circle in the center again, and now there's circles in every corner. And there's ones that go in this direction. All right, if I folded this, each of these corners are basically the same thing. 
So this one is biaxial. If that makes sense. I always found that it was easier to learn balance when I actually had the balance thing in front of me. So this one is biaxial. So if it is mirrored both horizontally and vertically, that's biaxial symmetry. But if it's either vertically or horizontally, that's just symmetry. So if it's one or the other, it's symmetry. If it's both, it's biaxial. So we got examples. Yes, we do. We're going to talk about the Taj Mahal. Now, normally, we talk about actual physical pieces of art. The thing with symmetry is that it's actually very, very difficult to find perfect symmetry within art. Because perfect symmetry and biaxial symmetry are both, um, they tend to eliminate variety because of how perfectly mirrored they are. And often within art, perfection, like symmetrical perfection, tends to be avoided because it creates a lack of, while it creates a lot of unity, it lacks um, variety. So often you don't see a lot of perfect symmetry. But a place where you do see a lot of perfect symmetry is architecture. And architecture is a, architectural design is a form of art, um, even though it kind of lands within that engineering <laughs> sort of bubble. Um, so the Taj Mahal was designed by Ustad Ahmed, oh no, Ustad Ahmed Lowry. Oh God, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, in 1632. Um, and of course, it's often very difficult to find perfect symmetry within art as it tends to take away from variety. But you see it a lot within architecture. But the beautiful thing about the Taj Mahal is it is this huge, you can see the little, see the little people down here um, for scale. It is a huge, beautiful temple and it is perfectly symmetrical on both sides. If I was to, can I, ooh, yes I can. If I was to flip this, right? Look at that, perfectly symmetrical on both sides. Even the plants are almost perfectly symmetrical, right? But if you flip it back and forth, there is, practically no difference other than like material difference let's say like if we kind of get rid of the idea of the bricks being different right you can see that they're not perfectly inlaid on both sides but in terms of their visual weighting the objects that are placed the items that are there they are perfectly balanced directly down the center right if i were to just take this line perfectly symmetrical down the center so the Taj Mahal is an example of perfect symmetry so let's close that off and let's move on to the next one. Kind of looks like dice in the four sections. Yeah. It must take a while to get everything perfect. Absolutely. Digital art is what's made it easy because of symmetry tools and whatnot. Um, but especially when it comes to like, it's hard to find symmetry in traditional art because they didn't have symmetry tools. <laughs> so it is a lot more difficult um, to get that way. Um, who asked about the comics? Yeah, witchy. Do you have any tips for starting a comic? I have seven chapters written, but my motivation sucks. Honestly, Ed, when you do it enough, you have to force yourself to. That's straight up it. Like, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta force yourself to. And then it's like, a, it's, it's a bonus point. It's bonus points if you get that external validation in order to continue going. Right? It, it, like, with my webtoon right i have a bunch of readers so that it's easier for me to have that motivation to keep going because now i have a commitment <laughs> to a good like fourteen and a half thousand people or so right but and it was the same thing when i was younger i had a lot of comics and like my friends would read them so then they would always ask for more and that would give me the motivation to keep going uh but if it's just you if you're the one planning it you're gonna have to force yourself it's a lot of um that passion that comes with it but if you find that your motivation to actually work on it um, tends to be lacking, maybe that's just not the one to be, right? Maybe it's not. But really, it is all about forcing yourself to work and to be able to do that grind on its own. Yeah, Grayson, basically. <laughs> I It started off, let me save this file um, while I talk. It started off as just like, you know, um, oh, stream 36. Wow, we have a little bit over a month's worth of these things. Like it started off as an Inktober project. And then, like, my my initial, like, it was mostly just friends that had followed me at that point. Um, and they really liked it. And I was like, okay, I'll just continue this, I guess. And then slowly it started to snowball. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's it's all about just kind of finding that groove. And it can take a while. Okay. Next one we're going to talk about. Approximate symmetry. Yeah. <laughs> 
okay, thanks, Jesse. Maybe I should give my phone to my mom while I get some of the art done. Possibly. How I always work on pages is I, I start with a bunch of sketches. So I sketch out a bunch of pages because I find if I work on one page at a time, um, my motivation gets lost. So if I have those sketches built up as a cue, then I have something to look forward to. That's kind of how I work with it. Um, so I do it all in steps. So I start with just the sketch and then I do the lines for all those pages and then I do the color for all those pages. It's like a three-step process. But that kind of helps. Yo, hello, Azari. Welcome in. <laughs> we love cultivating healthy and productive work ethics. Wow. We love cultivating healthy and productive work ethics for art. Yes, we do, Lou. Um, all right. So approximate symmetry is when it's close to perfect symmetry. But is just a little off. So approximate symmetry is when it's close to perfect symmetry, but it's just a little off, right? If you, if you fold it in half, the balance, like the space, the negative space and positive space that's being taken up is pretty close. It's almost the same, but it isn't perfect. It's like, it has maybe there's different objects that they've used, maybe, um, They've placed them in different places. Um, maybe it's that they're using different uh, colors or maybe they're using different, you know, it's like, it's close, but not exactly, right? So it's really, really close to perfect symmetry, but it's not exactly there. And it has a higher or has more variety or visual interest. compared to perfect symmetry. So approximate symmetry tends to have a little bit more visual interest compared to perfect symmetry, right? Because you have different elements on either side of your piece. It's not all exactly the same. It kind of has that same satisfying energy of symmetry. <laughs> right when you look at something you see something satisfying when it's like perfectly symmetrical not necessarily in art because it can, it might be boring uh, but when you have a little bit of that variety within there it has that greater sense of satisfaction i find hello poppy welcome in and inner magic ursena welcome in okay so if i were to draw this one out approximate symmetry Do another vertical kind of symmetry thing. How big does make this? Let's make it a little smaller. Oops. I am doing well, Poppy. <laughs> I hope you're doing well as well. And so let's kind of drop this line down the center. Say if we got like a big circle in the center. We, I always start with a big circle. I don't know why. So if we got like a big circle in the center and maybe you have a circle on this side and maybe you got a circle on this side, but it's a little bit smaller, but then they also have a, a sort of medium sized circle over here that balances it out. There's another circle over here. That's like really, really tiny. So it's not exact, but it's still really, really close. You got a huge corner of a circle over here. And then maybe a medium sized circle over here. Two medium sized circles. Approximate symmetry, I think, is like one of the harder ones to get right. That one doesn't feel right. We have another huge one, let's say. Yeah, I always find that approximate's a little bit harder to get. Let's say we've got one down here. You know what, let's not do the big circle in the center. Let's say we have 
one that's kind of like this, and one that's a little bit smaller. So not perfect, but it balances it out a little bit. But just a smidge. Okay, yeah, that feels a little bit better. Oh, actually, we have a small one there. Maybe here. That feels better. Okay. So approximate symmetry, right? It's pretty close, but not exact. So this is approximate. Approximate symmetry. So this one I find is tends to be a bit tough <laughs> to, to figure out, um, but it's not impossible. So this piece that I'm gonna be talking about for approximate symmetry, this one is pretty intense looking. I also have to find the name of it. Uh, it's the delivery of the keys to St. Peter by Pietro Perugino, <laughs> Pietro Perugino um, from 1481. Would approximate symmetry look more natural than perfect symmetry? Yes, that's another reason why it tends to be a little bit more pleasing to the eye. So this is the delivery of the keys to St. Peter by Pietro Perugino from 1481. Right, so it's almost perfectly symmetrical. You can look at the background. These like objects in the background, almost symmetrical. Like the, or the actual buildings themselves, that's practically symmetrical. It's like you can mirror it, it's almost the same. Let's actually do that, let's, let's, let's experiment. Right, if I were to flip this, yeah, it's practically symmetrical. Those buildings are practically symmetrical. However, the people aren't. While you have them almost symmetrical, oh, the plants as well, when you have them almost symmetrical, their balance is basically the same. However, if you flip it, they're not exact on both sides, right? You have this guy crouching. Um, oh, wait, I think this is, I think this is Jesus, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, yeah, he's got the halo on. Um, so the people in the background, obviously, if you mirror them perfectly, if you mirror them back and forth, it's not like you can fold it and they're the exact same on both sides, but their balance is really, really close to being exact. So that's why you'd call it approximate because it's almost there, but not quite. Um, because approximate symmetry is used a lot or was used a lot um, in earlier religious paintings and artwork. So a lot of stuff from Renaissance or Renaissance, uh, those tend to be very, very symmetrical. Oh, was this on the other side? LOL. <laughs> yeah so everything from uh the renaissance some baroquean paintings but mostly renaissance um were very very approximate or with like their symmetry you'll see that a lot it's a really really common theme with them symmetrical but same balance of people basically it's symmetrical when it comes to its balance but in terms of the um elements that are shown it isn't perfect, therefore it's approximate. Make this big, make this longer. So let's move all these upwards. Actually, no, let's keep them there. I need to move you upwards and then we can crop. Okay, I think we got two more. Yeah, we got two more. This next one is radial symmetry. I like this one a lot. <laughs> radial symmetry, I don't work with it a lot, but it's, it's a lot of fun. So radial symmetry is when elements move outwards. From a point. Like following the pattern. Oops. Of a star. A variety. Oh, wait, I was reading the wrong, the wrong point. Oh no, let's fix that. All sides. Oh, 
a mirror two plus times often seen with patterns or mandalas. So radial symmetry is when your elements move outwards from a point. It's like following the pattern of a star. Um, I'll draw it out for you when we get there. But it is basically you start from one point with most, most of the time within the center. If you want to kind of add some variety, some people start from a corner, like one of the rules of thirds. Um, or slightly off center, whatever. Uh, but also, but it, everything tends to move outwards from a point, and it creates almost circular, spiral-like pattern around that center point. So all sides are mirrored two plus times. That's when it's more exact. It doesn't have to be, but most of the time it will be. So that's all sides are mirrored more than two times. So with biaxial, you only have horizontal and vertical mirrored. With radial symmetry, it's more than that. So they might be mirrored on their diagonals, not even like the perfect diagonals. There might be even more in between. That's when it's like perfectly symmetrical. But even when it's not perfectly symmetrical, you'll have it um, to <laughs> go around more than just a biaxial symmetry. Um, and it's often seen with patterns and mandalas, right? Most of the time, whenever I see radial symmetry, it's often just with patterns. You'll see it sometimes within other paintings, but it's not going to be your main uh, balance that's used. Uh, say if you have like fireworks within a scene or if you've got like a whirlpool or something, it won't be the main thing that's um, within your piece, I find, but it's there. But when it is mostly within, um, when it is the dominant point or the dominant form of symmetry within a piece, often I see it with mandalas and patterns. And if you don't know what a mandala is, we're actually going to talk about that because that's going to be our example. So this one, another name I will struggle to pronounce. I apologize. I also can't really zoom in on this one because the image isn't very high quality. Um, but this one is the mandala of the forms of Manjushri, uh, which was created in the late 14th century. I believe this is a painting. It's either a painting or it's sewn. Um, it might actually be sewn onto a, a tapis tapestry. Uh, but it might have just been painted initially. This piece is in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It comes from Tibetan culture. This is another one of my ancient <laughs> arts uh, that I've decided to pick. Um, because, and because it's so ancient, we, we don't know the artist. Um, but it comes from the late 14th century. That's when it was created. Hello, Gregor. Welcome in. And this piece in particular can be split into... Um, this is a, an example of perfect radial symmetry. So it can be split into perfectly um, perfectly down the horizontal, right? If this were, oh, you know what? I should just use black. It's mostly with red, so I was like, I'll just use the, the complement. Um, so it can be perfectly split down the center. It can be perfectly split down horizontally and vertically, but it can also be split in these directions as well. So it has for eight different sections that it can be mirrored almost exactly across, which means that it is a form of very symmetrical radial symmetry. This is a really beautiful piece. I really wish I had a higher resolution image of it. Um, but yeah, this is an example of a mandala. Because a mandala is one really big piece where um, it is basically just one big radial <laughs> symmetry. Sometimes they're just patterns. Sometimes they actually have forms within them like this one. But often you'll see them in a lot more um, religious settings. But sometimes people people nowadays, I've seen mandalas used just for like relaxation stuff. You've ever seen those adult coloring books? They love mandalas. They love those things. <laughs> um, but yeah, you'll see those a lot. So that's radial symmetry. Oh, I should draw it. Let's do that. Oops. I forgot to do that. So our little radial symmetry. I'm gonna actually have to make this one a square. So if we start with this thing. Oh, one second. Okay. 
we start with this thing, and say if we were to split it in this direction, so if we were to start on a point there, this direction, this direction, and this direction, it kind of all goes outwards. I'm actually not going to fill in my circles this time. But let's say we start with this one. Maybe we got some semicircles here. Then we've got these. Actually, then I should make it like that. Maybe we've got some points in the corners here. So this is very radial. This is considered radial symmetry because it all kind of goes out from one section. So this is radial. You can either have it like as rings or you can have it as a spiral, one or the other. Um, and of course it doesn't have to be exact, but usually when it follows that sort of circular pattern, that's radial. And we got one more. How are we doing for time? Okay, that's not bad. We got one more, which is asymmetrical balance. And this is the one that most people know and use. An asymmetrical balance is the opposite. Of symmetrical, oops. Of... Symmetrical balance. No sides are mirrored. Uh, but still feel. Visually balance. Oops. Most common form of balance. takes a better eye. To use. Often utilizes. The rule of thirds. Or other compositional techniques in order to feel correct. Asymmetrical, asymmetrical what? All right. <laughs> it looks like the spirit from Legend of Zelda. You're going to have to be more specific. But which spirit? There's a lot of different... Or which Zelda? There's a lot of spirits in Zelda. <laughs> Do you mean the fairy? Like Navi? Navi's a fairy. This one. Yeah. Because Navi's a fairy. Um, yeah, if you're talking about a different spirit, you're going to have to specify which Zelda. There's a lot of spirits. <laughs> All right, so asymmetrical balance is the opposite of symmetrical balance. So there are no sides that are mirrored, but overall everything still feels visually balanced or equally visually weighted. So it feels like there's a good amount of positive space on one side, a good amount of positive space on the other side. Feels like there's a good amount of negative space on all ends. Um, and it's not mirrored at all. There's no mirroring, but it still feels visually equal. Uh, it's the most common form of balance. You'll see this one the most, but it takes a better eye to use. So it takes you a bit of... Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, Navi's a, Navi's a fairy. 
So this is the most common form of balance, but it takes a better eye to use. So this one tends to be really, really common. You'll see it with a lot more pieces just because it, it is the most interesting form of balance because there's a lot of things you can do um, and you can couple it with compositional techniques. Um, since it often utilizes the rule of thirds or other compositional techniques in order to feel correct compared to symmetry, which is like, it doesn't really use those compositional techniques as much as asymmetry does because asymmetry tends to be vis more visually interesting compared to symmetry. So that's why it's the most common, but it does take a better eye to use. It takes a better uh, sense of visual weighting. So if we have asymmetrical balance, There is no symmetrical line, but let's say I had my, say if I had a big circle here, and we got some smaller circles off to the sides. Maybe we got a big one in the corner here. Maybe there's some smaller one in the corner here, then more little ones. This one actually might want to move over here. Yeah. And then there's another cutoff one here. So this is asymmetrical. There is no mirror ring whatsoever. No mirror ring whatsoever, but based off of how we're looking at it, it feels visually weighted kind of correctly. If we take some if we have something in a larger area between it, there should be some smaller things, so on and so forth. There's a lot of different rules you can set for yourself. But it all depends on what you're going for. These are just circles, so this is just kind of like an easy way to show, <laughs> compare and contrast each of them. And our last little example. Your voice is really nice to listen to while trying. Thank you. I've always thought that my voice is kind of annoying. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> But I mean, a bunch of you are listening to me, so I guess I'm not that annoying. My last little example, because I always like to take something from modern stuff as my last example, is one of my favorite Kirby games. Many would argue that it's not their favorite. I like this one a lot. It's Kirby's Return to Dreamland, uh, which came out in 2011. I was... Oh no. <laughs> I was 10, I think, when this one came out. Um, that's about right. Yeah, I was about 10 years old when this one came out. I think I played it when I was 11, though. Um, so I didn't play it uh, directly on the day that it came out, but at the time that it came out. Nowadays, I get I get Kirby games the day they come out. I don't... <laughs> I pre-ordered them. There's no way I'm waiting. Um, I just found this channel a few days ago. I'm excited. I saw a stream going on. I'm super excited. I'm glad, Kyrie. Welcome in. I'm glad you could join. So this is the cover art for Kirby's Return to Dreamland. I'm very familiar with it. I have it in my house. I've almost 100% completed this game, but I actually never beat the final boss. <laughs> I just gathered every single little thing, every single little cog and wheel that you can gather, and I just couldn't beat the boss. So my last percent of that game, I had 99% completion. The last percent would have been completing that, beating that boss, and I never did. So, <laughs> you know, um, but I love this game. This is a perfect example of asymmetrical balance. The reason I chose this one, not be just because it's Kirby, and I love Kirby, um, is because there's a lot of simple forms in here. Kirby uses a lot of just circles, and it's why it's a lot easier <laughs> to talk about. Um, but the great thing with this one is you can see that even though nothing in here is... You can't flip anything. If you took this piece or this cover, you flip it, right? There is nothing on here that's mirrorable. Oops. Oh, I'm using, I'm using the wrong don't apply. I'm using the wrong layer. There we go. If you took this piece, I flipped it. Nothing is mirrored. It's all asymmetrical. Even if I did it horizontally as well, I don't have that option right now. Um, but I flip it. Nothing is mirrored. Absolutely nothing. But on the contrary, everything still feels visually weighted. You have these two. Kirby is our largest object here. It takes up the majority of the space. So he's also our focal point. He takes up two points. Two points of our rule of thirds. If we split this down into here, like that grid, he takes up two different points of our rule of thirds, which makes him more visually important compared to everything else. There's also text. Text will always be the first thing that your eyes go to within graphic design. Um, so you read the text first, then you see Kirby. You see him using, uh, oh my God, leading lines. You go out here, 
And then there's actually a bit of radial symmetry that comes out from here. Like I mentioned, radial symmetry often is present in a lot of things. It's just never the focal point. <laughs> so we actually do have a bit of radial symmetry here. It starts from around here with all the stars going outwards like that. But those stars point down directly to these other characters, which are our less visually heavy um, elements, but they are still present. And what they do is that their um, general amount of positive space actually takes up the same amount of general positive space as Kirby himself does, which is a which is what you usually want to do with asymmetry. There are three smaller oops, there are three smaller objects here, which take up approximately the same amount of positive space as the one larger object, which means that it creates this asymmetrical balance. It feels visually weighted properly using different size objects. The same with the sword, right? The sword takes up about the same amount of visual energy as all three of the different objects here. And they're nice and spaced, right? You have a good amount of negative space in between everything, which balances out very nicely as well. Every little object here, deliberately placed. You've got a nice amount of flowers here that all again have about the same visual weighting, not symmetrical at all, but they have a nice, they kind of fill in the space a bit more. Same with this background here, you even have a little tree two little hills here that take up about the same amount of space as the waterfall that's over here. Everything's very deliberate. It's very, very deliberate. And that's how you kind of, that's how you create asymmetrical balance is you kind of have to figure out where to put all those elements of your positive space and negative space in order to create an overall visually balanced experience. Will you draw one of the characters from Overlord? I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Um, there's a Discord for this channel as well. Yes, there is indeed. Join the Discord. <laughs> he is more important. His name is on the cover. Yes, he is. He's our main character. Of course, he's important. But all right, those are our examples of balance. I'm going to actually turn on all my layers real quick just to see where everything is. Oh. Just so then I don't crop out anything because i'm going to crop this file um but yeah those are our types of balance that we have talked about um and that's going to conclude our lesson portion of today so there's a lot of different so just as a kind of a mini recap right we talked about symmetrical and biaxial balance approximate symmetry radial symmetry and asymmetrical balance so we've got all those beautiful little ideas that you can keep in your brain when you want to balance out your pieces, right? We don't want to see any more characters drawn slightly over the... <laughs> What's a thing I did when I was a kid? All the time. You see my sketchbook page, kind of looks like that, and you have a character drawn right here, like that, and there's all this negative space. There's nothing drawn here, absolutely nothing. Nothing drawn here either. It's just like that. Maybe there's a title up here, which also very unbalanced. <laughs> That's what I did all the time. Um, highly unbalanced but now we know so that means we can get into the final illustration portion um as with all of our other oops let's make this should i do a yeah let's do a vertical one because i've been doing a lot of horizontal composition as with all of our other principles of design streams this one is also going to be technically themed around Kirby. So we're going to be having um, Kirby as our main source of inspiration for the final illustration. Uh, but if you were have been part of the channel for a while, then you know that in order to determine the theme of the last illustration, um, we always have a community poll that goes up on Wednesdays, which you can vote on to see what our final illustration is going to be themed around. So this time around, uh, balance is usually... Um, determined, how we do balance is usually determined based on um, our theming and our mood. That's another thing that it helps with. Um, and you guys wanted something spooky. Tis the season. So we're going to be trying to do something a little bit spookier with a uh, friend Kirby here. Last time we did Unity, we did Unity with color. So I chose to do a, uh, what's it called? An analogous palette. I chose to work with a lot of um, purples and blues and pinks, so I kind of stayed within that range. Um, a little bit more monochromatic in terms of the colors that I chose, but that helped with the unity. 
So I think I'm going to actually, because this is, I want it to be, you guys wanted something spooky. Um, I'm going to take, I'm actually going to take inspiration from the Kirby anime. Um, and I'm actually going to go with approximate symmetry. Uh, just because approximate symmetry, in this case, will work a little bit better for what I'm planning. I've been drawing a Medibang for months. I've been drawing a Medibang... <sighs> when did we start streaming? It's been a couple of years, hasn't it? Something like that. Hasn't it? Oh my god, I think it has. <laughs> it's been a couple of years. I think we've been streaming one or two times. Yeah, because if we started streaming... Yeah, if we started streaming late 2020, it's, oh, it's, you know what? We're coming up on a year. We're coming up on a year now. Because <laughs> we started uploading videos, I want to say, May 2020. And then we started streaming sometime in the fall. I think September. Yeah, so I think we were about a year after streaming. Um, so I've been using Medibank for about a year now. Um, it's not bad. It's not a bad program. I do still prefer to stick with Photoshop 99% of the time. Um, Photoshop and Clip Studio. But this is a, a fantastic program if you're, you know, on a budget, don't really want to, can't really spend too much on programs. That's totally fine, my guy. The, the program does not make the artist. It's the artist that makes the program, you know? I've seen some amazing stuff done on something as simple as Microsoft Paint, you know? So again, guys, I'm going to be doing uh, Approximate Symmetry. Um, taking inspiration from the Kirby anime. I you could you could show me screenshots from that show. I would know exactly what episode it is, and I could recount to you what the I watched every episode a good twice over at the least twice each. <laughs> I loved that anime when I was a kid, like with my whole heart. And there was only a hundred episodes. I've also watched the banned one because it couldn't air in North America. Um, this episode in particular is one where Kirby gets possessed. The the horror, do you know what actually? The horror episode for Kirby was pretty intense too. When they got they got trapped in a haunted house. There is a scene where like all the Kirby and his friends, Tiff and Tuff, they're two they're two uh siblings. Uh they all all of them get stuck <laughs> in this haunted house. They get led there. Um and there's a one point they get stuck in a particular room and like they get locked in and then all the um <laughs> all the gargoyles start like leaking blood like from their eyes and their mouth yes that's an actual episode <laughs> no it was not censored um it was pretty sick not gonna lie and then like they get to the basement and it looks like uh, DDDs being like sacrificed on an altar. It's like a two-parter episode, if I remember correctly, because it starts off with them doing like a haunted uh, walk, like "Ooh, let's go into the forest at night, spooky," and then they accidentally go off the trail or something. Um, that's a pretty spooky episode. That's not the one I'm taking inspiration from. The one that I'm taking inspiration from is one where Kirby's kind of down by the lake. Um, he's just kind of minding his his own business, and then a frog possesses him. Like, this, this evil frog. <laughs> it possesses him. And, like, the whole episode is just Kirby causing mayhem. I think there's a scene in that episode in particular that got cut out of the American version. When Kirby gets a hold of, like, a firearm from a... <laughs> from the, um... From the police office. Um, there's a one point where Kirby drives a car off the road. And, like, he has this really, like... I found it cute, but he has this really, like, evil gremlin laugh throughout the entire episode. His face constantly looks like this. If you've ever seen that GIF set where Kirby's face looks like this, it's real. It's 100% real. That episode rules. Um, I could talk about the Kirby anime forever. I, I hope you know that. I don't know, like, it's not like... <laughs> That's so funny. Um, is drawing on PC better or an iPad? It doesn't matter. Yes, Lewis is correct. It's entirely up to you and your preference. Um, actually it's a tablet but everyone who draws good uses a PC so I was just wondering thanks for the answers no worries um, it's honestly like it's up to you I have some friends who work amazingly on Procreate um, I like using I use both a for travel I use a Surface Pro 7 so like a Microsoft Surface um, which is basically a touchscreen tablet um, works very similarly to an iPad except it uses like PC functions um, just because I prefer the PC versions of the programs that I use. Um, but 
it, it's again like i mentioned it's the pro it's the program the program does not make the artist it's the artist that makes the program right so it's all up to you how you prefer to work that episode sounds absolutely wild it was the best this whole show was the best it's like it it's kind of like it, it wasn't good it was like it's that kind of version of good where like it's good for kind of the wrong reasons ddd has this like really heavy new orleans accent throughout the entire thing meta knight is portrayed as like a like a spanish character <laughs> If you've ever seen like Kirby animations and DDD has a specific kind of like New Orleans accent or Meta Knight has like a Spanish accent, that's why. It's because in the English version of the anime, they have those particular accents. Um, if you've ever heard people whenever like they're, they're kind of referring to stuff from Kirby and they hear that you hear them go like, you better get it with the money back guarantee. That's from the, that's from the opening. The one opening that I have memorized is the Kirby anime opening. <laughs> it's the best. Oh, you know what? Let's do something fun. Let's work with a bit of perspective with light. This one's not going to be like perfectly spooky. I, I think like... Hope will be as good of a drawer as you someday. <laughs> Oh, it's been a while since I've heard someone refer to me as a drawer. Um, you absolutely will be. My biggest goal as, as an instructor is always for my own students to surpass me. I think I've said that to my own students before. Is I'm like, my goal will be reached when my students surpass me. And that's what I want. Yeah, because the frog was really funny. It was like... It was, it was like a little, it was basically just like a, it looked like, oh no, it had goat eyes. It was like, it was like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it kind of looked like this. And then it had like, you know, the, the big frog toes, but then it had like horns <laughs> and it had little wings, it had little devil wings. It was a demon frog. It was the best. It looked something like that, if I remember correctly. Uh like I could do this. It's kind of fun thing because uh, like the the whole thing with uh, Kirby right back at you was that it was like a big thing where DDD kept ordering monsters from like this corporation who creates monsters. N M E, you know, great name. It's N M E, <laughs> but you know, say it fast enough, enemy. Um, it was a great time, and then like he like. So he orders it from this big machine in his throne room. The whole every single episode is just DDD ordering a different monster to try and defeat Kirby. A lot of them are from like are just like monsters from the games um, that you see a lot. Um, or it's like Yeah, most of them are monsters from the games. Sometimes it's just monsters that are like exclusive to the show. One of them that is one of them in particular that was, like, exclusive to the show was the fact that uh, Chef Kawasaki was, like, a good guy and not a boss that you could eat to get Cook Kirby. <laughs> the Cappies as well. They were village folk, not just, like, things you could eat. <laughs> they don't even give you powers in the game. Useless. I love Spanish telenovela Mennonite. It literally, it's literally that. It's so good. You know what? I guess we're going with symmetry for this one. Perfect symmetry. It's not about being good or bad because everyone has different styles. Everyone does have different styles, but I would argue that sometimes... It, art is very subjective, but I would argue that people usually have a better handle on styles than others. Uh, yeah. No, I remember that one. So, Drew. Um, the thing with Gravity Falls is that Gravity Falls is something that you expect to have something like that in, not the Kirby anime. <laughs> Gravity Falls was themed around horror and supernatural things. Kirby, not so much. It was a, you know, if you compare that to the one episode where the dentist monster shows up and it, it mal how Kirby beats it, beats it is because it malfunctions when it tries to, like, operate on Kirby and it finds that he has no teeth. 
That was a great episode. That one was a good one. <laughs> it was so dumb. That was a good episode. Like, one of the characters has, like, a raging toothache. And, like, the the monster, like, it, it grabs him and, like, performs just, like, dental surgery on him. And he's, like, and he just lets him go when he's done. He's, like, yeah, you're, you're good to go. <laughs> it was a good episode. King DDD use Amazon for Amazon was a thing. So true. <laughs> DDD's got a club of that damn Kirby. Oh, I remember. Oh, oh, dude, you're speaking to me now. That's that's. Oh, I got a club of that damn Kirby. That's what we do best at NME. You better get it with the money back guarantee. And then the saxophone solo, so good, so good. That sounds amazing. It's such a good anime. <laughs> it's like not amazing, but it's super good. You can actually find it all for free on YouTube. Um, if you look up Kirby right back at you, you should be able to find just any episode. It's really great. The last episode's a whole hour long, but every ep normal episode's about like 20 minutes-ish. Um, a, a while ago, a bunch of animators got together and they created a Kirby right back at you reanimated. That was a good good reanimated and it was a great episode that one was about the animation pipeline watching that one for the first time and i was like oh that's how that's how it works every artist is distraught and tired <laughs> it's like yeah no that's very very true air this dude doesn't have any teeth basically why is kirby so dark i'm taking inspiration from a, a particular kirby episode where he becomes evil because he gets possessed by an evil frog <laughs> I don't know why I did the shading first. I guess just to get it out of the way. Um, okay, yeah. Let's see what colors I want to work with here. Maybe I'll do it more triadic. I feel like, you know, maybe I'll stick with the colors of the show. It was a lot of browns, browns and pinks. That was a really. Oh, whoopsies. Let's reference just the layer for a second. Uh, oi. Oh, wrong layer. There we go. There we go. Because of the light effects, this will be like basically white up here. There was actually a lot of tile because they lived in the the thing with like Kirby, the Kirby right back at you is like Kirby's one of the main characters, but he's not really who the show focuses on. The show is like. You have Kirby, who's like the the main quote unquote figure, but then you have uh, other characters who are also there. That's a uh, that's Tiff and Tuff, and they are they're the the siblings that like help out Kirby the most. And their parents are like they work for DDD, so they're like in the palace. So they all live in the palace. So you get a lot of in palace shots and whatever. It's like they live down the hall from them or something. Or do they live in the palace? I think they, they either live in the palace or really near to it. Something like that. I'm going to just switch this to... Oh, I like that blue better. <laughs> Let's work with the blue here. Even though there isn't really a lot of blue tiling within the show. Maybe I'll switch this to... I'll use, a, I'll use an overlay layer. I'll see what I can do. Okay. And then obviously Kirby is that pink. Yeah. I'm probably going to render this one out too. Just for fun. Oh, thank you. No worries. I've never seen that snail that hangs around King DDD anywhere in the kids that are always with Kirby in any games. No, it's because they were created specifically for the anime. Um, the snail, Escargoon, you know. Like Escargol, but he says DDD's goon, so it's Escargoon. Best character. I don't care what anybody says. Escargoon was so good. He was just so tired all the time. And you could like tell that he's just in it for like the clout. Like, what a guy. Me too. <laughs> Poor Escargoon. He was like, Escargoon 99% of the time was collateral damage. <laughs> Straight up. Like, whenever something bad happened, he was just kind of there. And, like, DDD's there making terrible choices. It was a good time. It was a really good time. 
Actually, do I want to do tiles? I could. I might be tougher. Oh, it's five o'clock. Okay, give me a second. Hey, Jesse, loving this composition. Hello, Faye. Welcome in. Faye is our lovely art director, our studio director, for those who don't know. And for those who always think that this channel is mine, it's not, it's hers. <laughs> so, hello, welcome in, Faye. Escargoon is Squidward's adjacent, basically. Except Escargoon was a little bit more. He was tired, but he wasn't like the same kind of tired that uh, Squidward is. I think he was like kind of a tired because he's like surround. He's like he's like devoted to DDD, but he doesn't know why. He's like he's kind of there, and he's like, yeah, I'm. It's like I'm devoted to this guy, but I think it's just for the paycheck. That's kind of how it goes with Escargoon. Yeah, so I guess because this isn't like perfect, perfect, I'd still call this approximate symmetry. It's about as perfect as I can get it, basically, without any symmetrical to symmetry tools. And what this grid does is it gives me a bit of perspective assistance. Can I select this section only? Oh, yes, I can. Genius. Let's just change the hue of that real quick. Something like, oh yeah, there we go. And then we'll just fix Kirby's feet here. What a great show. Highly recommend Kirby right back at you. <laughs> it's like, I don't know how well it's aged, but I watched it all the time. Like it, I'd already, I started watching it like, a good, like, <sighs> 10 years after it finished. Because it finished in, like, 2000. 10 years, 8 years? I'd say 8 years after it finished. Because it's start, it, like, ended in 2001, if I remember correctly. That was, like, when I was born. So, obviously, I didn't watch it when I was that young. But I ended up watching it in, like, 2009. Like, 2009-ish is when I watched it the most. Of, like, my own accord. Oh, there we go. Let's fix this a little bit. Woo. Okay, now let's do some rendering. <laughs> Welcome to the streamer Jesse writes about Kirby. It's what happens when we decide to, when I decide to do a Kirby illustration. Based on the anime, my childhood. And everyone gets to see my terrifying rendering process, which is just <laughs> one layer working with that. Oh, I forgot to do, um, okay, wait, let's get rid of that for a second. give him some rim lighting because that'll help a little bit with the forms a little bit of lighting out here as well just a little bit rough I'll probably fix this with gradients as well. This is just to kind of give a nice... It's either going to be overlaid or... Mm. Hard light? Yeah, hard light interacts better. Okay. And it's a little bit less strong down here. Whoops. Let's just do this magic. There we go. Love to see it. Okay. Cool. That's going to have to do with them. Ah, 
Yes. Daria is correct. Just read this. Biggest piece of advice is not compare yourself to other artists. Art is a personal journey and everyone finds their style at their own pace. Very true. Very true. Don't compare yourself. There's a difference between... You know, a lot of people are like, well, how do I improve if I don't compare myself? No, no, no. There's a difference between comparing and being inspired. You can be inspired by other artists, right? Take what they know and be like, that's where I want to be. And be inspired in that way. But don't look at them and go like, oh, I'm not there yet. That means I'll never be there. No, no, no. That's not how you should approach it. You should approach it as more like, it's like, I'm not there yet, but I will be. I can't wait. Right? That's a better way to kind of look at it. Escargo and Spongebob is King DVD. But at the same time, Squidward and Escargo are going to be the best friends and hate the world together. Exactly. This is adorable. Thank you, Nakia. I remember they had episodes of the Kirby show on the 3DS and Nintendo video before it shut down. Yes, they did. They did indeed. Um, they had a few episodes of Kirby right back at you. They had college humor videos, which I always found really funny, but I have no clue why college humor was on the Nintendo device. <laughs> um, the Nintendo Nintendo video actually gave me, it taught me about my, uh, told me about my, my current favorite song. Like, my favorite song ever is um, The Rifle Spiral by The Shins. And that the music video was on the Nintendo video. And I I remember being obsessed with it. I was like, oh my god, it's so cool. It's a, it's a stop motion animation, for those who are curious. Um, beautiful, beautiful animation. It's a great song. It's just really catchy. It's a good time. It's a good time. Yeah, slightly spooky Kirby. Yeah, I'm not going full spooks for this one. Um, next week, we're actually doing creature designs. I'm excited for that one. Oh, hang on. It's 5.15. I forgot. Because it's time to speak about this studio. Because if you did not know, we're not just a YouTube channel. For those of you who are new, there's a lot of you who are new today, actually. Welcome. Oh, I forgot to name this layer. There's a lot of you who are new in here, so welcome. Um... If you didn't know, we're not just a YouTube channel, we're also an art studio. We're an art school. Faye popped in, she's one of the lovely instructors, along with me. So if you'd like to check out the classes that we have to offer, then please be sure to check them out on our website. Um, winter camps are going to be starting soon. I'm going to be teaching one week of illustration. Um, so if you'd like to, uh, like a more advanced class, if you'd like to kind of check that out. Um, so be sure to check out all the classes that we offered over on the website this file that you see in front of you the kirby illustration plus the lesson that we learned earlier from today both of those are going to be available on our discord um, as jpegs for you to download keep and save and study off of if you'd like to um, those are all yours when they get uploaded there but along with a lot of other stream files you're gonna if you want my layers for any of my illustrations you're gonna have to join our patreon for as little as five dollars a month for our working files um but if you just want our behind the scenes stuff that's two dollars a month um so if you'd like to check those out um some of the spots have a limited amount of um slots so be sure to check those out before they're all gone all right let's get back to the rendering i always find the, the rendering is a little bit tougher in anything for me because i have a lot of brushes in photoshop and they're just a bit easier for me to work with but you can work with anything. As long as you put your brain to it. The thing with Koibi. Is he's gonna have that. He's a sphere. So he's gonna have like a bit of this. But he's also flesh. So he's gonna have this kind of. Ambient occlusion. Or sorry. Uh, subsurface scattering right here. And he's gonna have the core shadow. And then there's gonna be a bit of bounce light on the other side. This actually has another name. Some I, like I think the core shadow is somewhere else, but this is like the there's another name for the band that's like the darkest portion, and then there's gonna be a bit of bounce underneath here as well. And this makes him feel a little bit more three dimensional. Yes, and join the Discord. Become an art nerd. Interact with other fellow art nerds. And me. I'm there. <laughs> I talk on there pretty often. Um, and if not, then I am lurking. I might pop up. Post your art. Join the discussion. I may go, like, the same kind of route that I did when I did the Marks illustration. A bit of a rough rendering. 
depending on how long this takes. Oh, you know what I'm excited for, actually? Let's go back to conventions, dude. You know how fun conventions are? If you've never been to, like, a like a nerdy convention, like, a, like for y'all Americans, like San Diego Comic-Con or um, NYCC, and over, like, over here in Canada, one of the bigger ones is Fan Expo, which is happening soon. And I'm really excited to go. <laughs> like, honestly, at conventions, it's, like, it, it's definitely going to look different, you know, obviously with uh, Colbead and all that fun jazz. But, uh, man, I am, it, like, the insanity is not going to be the same, but I'm excited to get part, back, back into it. Because that, like, my god, the highlight of my year, always. One of the highlights of my year is always going to a convention. Can you give him a knife like in the Kirby meme? Um, you know what, actually? What's funny about that origin? Not only is the plushie, Kirby gets a hold of a knife in this episode. Just for you, Sleepy Studios, I will do that. <laughs> in this episode, he does get a hold of a knife. I remember. He gets in the kitchen. He almost stabs Kawasaki. That was a good time. Now you've made me remember. You've made me remember it. Nice. Hello, Aku. Welcome in. That's all right if you're a little bit late. This will all be up on the channel afterwards for you to watch in full. And then there's going to be a condensed, shortened version as well that our lovely editor, JC, will do. Yeah. What, are, what other things did he do in that episode? It's like, I'm trying to remember them now. Because that one was never one of my favorites until I got older. When I was younger, my favorites were, um, oh gosh, it was the one where it's like you got more lore on Meta Knight. That one was a good one that I really loved. I loved the final episode that was an hour long when, when he fights like enemy, like the, the company that DDD gets all his stuff from. That one was a good episode. Um... Oh, what other ones were my favorite? The animation one? The animation studio one? That was another favorite of mine. There was one with, like, a ninja that showed up. That was another good one. The Halloween one was one of my favorites as well. Like, the Halloween two-parter. This year was the first time to Dragon Con. It was so much fun. I haven't heard of Dragon Con, but I've never actually... I, I don't know. If, I don't think that's in Canada, but... Very nice. Conventions are the best. They're honestly really, really fun. You meet a lot of, like, other nerds, and you just kind of get to geek out a lot of, about a lot of stuff. You see a lot of cosplayers. Like, the creativity. The vendors. Always the best. Especially if you get, like, the independent artists, and, like, you get, like, the high-quality merch. It's the best. Sometimes it's original work, too. I love getting the original work. Like, stuff that isn't fan art. Even if it's, like, at a fan convention. I love getting the non-fan art stuff as well. Oh, I should have changed the, the diagram lines to uh to a multiply layer as well. That's okay. Yeah, I kind of want the oh I should fix that. I want that kind of shadowy look to its overall form. Yeah. It's gonna be so awesome. Yeah, I mean, I've struggled with knives in the past when I add them in without any prior stuff, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'll try my darndest this time. <laughs> no, you know what? Let's use something colder because we, yeah, that's better. It matches the shadow a bit better. Yeah, Halloween episodes are one of the best in anything. It's very true. Um, especially because this one was released, it was released in, like, the earlier 2000s, so the restrictions weren't the same as they are now, so it was, like, a little bit freakier. Um, even then, like, it, it wasn't, like, super scary, obviously. It's Kirby. How scary can you get? Um, but compared to the other episodes, that episode, pretty creepy. Having DDD being, like, sacrificed on an altar, that was kind of funny. <laughs> but... Yeah, a good time. That was a good episode. Mm. 
you're, for some reason your drawing reminded me of the Clefairy and Gengar theory. Yeah. Ooh, it's an old theory. That's from like my time. <laughs> I thought it was Clefairy at first, yeah. Oh man, oh man. All right, let's do this magic. Let's give a bit of dimension to these shadows. Oh, I forgot to add like light onto the, ooh, I'll do that in a second. So it's mostly just gonna be I find that I work in a lot more blues, but I find it a lot easier to shade reds and pinks, like like add lighting to them because I know how their color theory works the best. Because I work with a lot of skin, so it like it gets a little bit easier to work with. Um, but I tend to work with a lot more blues. That tends to be my area of like work. Like you see a lot of my artwork, and it tends to fall within the colder colors. It's a little bit more desaturated usually. But I, I find that working in saturated reds is a lot easier for me anyway. Which is a bit of a weird, a bit of a weird mix. <laughs> yes, this gives back a little bit more of that 3D-ness. The bounce light. A nice and subtle bounce light. It's not too intense, not too crazy. But it's there for dimensions purpose, dimension sake. Adding bounce light traditionally, by the way, not easy. <laughs> I had to do it for my observational illustration a little while ago. Oi. <laughs> Oi. My observational illustration class. A fun one. I think I'm doing pretty good in that class, but it's definitely tricky for someone who hasn't done traditional artwork in a very long time. Sorry, I'm seeing the chat move, but I haven't checked it in a while. I'm trying to focus for a second. <laughs> Oh, that was good. Let's move that. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's some forms, dude. <laughs> he just wants to hug you around your throat, basically. <laughs> yes, tis the season, Riley. I find that desaturated colors are less hard on my eyes in the long term, so I use them more. Yeah, that's valid. Uh, a lot of the times using high saturation is discouraged with more traditional work. Um, just because it's quote unquote not very realistic. Um, nowadays, though, we as artists tend to get pretty experimental, so it's up to you how you choose to use your colors. Um, personally, I stick to more desaturated just because it is within that realm of slight, slight realism. Um, like I like to have that slight realism within my work, so I stick with like that with like my with a lot of my proportions, my colors, and all that. Um, but yeah, just use what you're content with, man. All up to you. All up to you. I'm spending a really long time on this Kirby. I want to make sure. Okay. That's actually not too bad. We're not doing too bad. Not too bad. I'm constantly looking back and forth between the clock and me working. Yeah, so this is like approximate, because of the knife, I'm going to add in the knife, it's going to be approximate symmetry, so not perfect symmetrical balance, but we're going to go with something more approximate. Yeah, so shadows are going to be sharper here, but as you go a little bit farther, shadows will soften their edges. So they won't be like perfectly sharp, depending on the proximity. I think we talked about this a while ago within our lighting stream. Um, shadows will lose their form the farther away from 
the physical object they are. I don't remember if we did a live stream highlight on our lighting stream. I really liked that one. That one was a really good stream. <laughs> Just because I had a lot of fun doing that one. A, I love lighting. Lighting is one of my favorite things ever. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a genre that I haven't dipped my toes in a lot. I find the uh, like for me, I w like with that genre of horror isn't always my favorite. It's like I, I find that a lot of the times it tends to be overdone. So I'm like, you know, do what you want. Obviously, I'm not gonna hate you if you do it. <laughs> um, it depends on how you handle it, I guess. I like creativity when it comes to. And a lot of the times when I see that within the genre, it ends up being, like, there for the sake of shock value. And I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> you can do better than that. Um, that's how I kind of see it anyway. Um, again, no judgment. Do whatever the heck you want, man. Some people like genre more genres better than others. It's like, I like the more Uncanny Valley kind of creeping sense of dread horror. That's my favorite kinds of horror. I love analog horror. I love um, cult horror. I think I mentioned was one of my favorite. Yeah, because it doesn't like. I hate working with shadows. It makes my characters look 90. You gotta... I used to say the same thing. It's, it's literally just because I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> you need to be able to know how to work with your shadows in order for your characters to remain young and youthful looking or for forms to look, you know, nice, right? Learn the subtlety of shadows compared to making them more intense, so on and so forth. Oh, you know what other genre of horror I love? Body horror. That one tends to be really cool. Just because it's like you get the... You get two kinds of body horror, right? You get the the more... Uh, the more shock value kind of body horror, which is like, it's very hit or miss for me. Or you get the people who are really like gods at anatomy. And they create these beautiful monsters that are like... You look at them and you're like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, how does that anatomy work? I don't know, but I'm in love with it, you know? Um, that's the kind of body horror that I love, love. Um, the body horror, that's a little bit more for the shock value. I find that that one's like, that one's pretty good too, but I think that I'm like, I'm very much like wishy-washy with it. Cause again, same deal. It can be a bit overdone. Um, so then it's like, I like the, the more original ones. There's a Japanese artist that I really love that does body horror really well. It's in this weird, like, mathematical kind of way it's it's a little bit it's a bit tough to explain i think like because they use a lot of fractals they use a lot of like um i think one of their favorite compositional techniques is um not freudian what's that the fibonacci they love using like fibonacci um compositional technique which looks fantastic it looks really really cool um really original stuff I don't. I can't. Rem I can't remember their name for the life of me. But like, I see their work all the time. Pops up on my Twitter timeline a lot. Oops. Where'd the chat go? There we go. <laughs> Body horror is rad, but not for the faint of heart. Yeah. Body horror is is one of those weird ones. It's those weird kind of sides of horror that I think is like some people are like, oh no, oh no, Harry. And they kind of see it for the first time. It's kind of the same with like death metal. You kind of hear it and you're like, oh dear. But then you get into it after a while. <laughs> and then some people never do. And you know what? That's okay too. Yeah, to have the natural, the shadow feel a lot more natural, you gotta have it fade out. As it gets farther away from the main subject matter. Oops. 
I always find that after I render for a fair amount of time, my body gets more used to it, so then I go back into the areas that I didn't do quite so well and, like, fix them. It's kind of like some... I don't have warm-up sketches, because if I do, then I, I end up, like... <laughs> I end up trying to finish that sketch. Um, so often what I do is I warm up on the spot, and then if I have areas that I need to fix, then I do them on the spot. Where's my brush size? Come on. I can only go up to that? That's it? Okay. And I don't like the size locking. That's one thing I don't like about Betty Bang. Betty Bang is that it size locks. And I'm like, I want to get bigger than this brush size. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, same with Clip Studio, it brush locks at a really small size. And I'm like, come on, you gotta... It's like, make it larger than that. <laughs> or it size locks at a very small size for me. Which is like not great for larger scale uh, concept art. Kind of fixing up these shadows down here because that area is a little bit too smooth now for the rest of the theming of the piece. I'm also going to fix the tiles as well. Just trying to walk you through kind of what my brain is doing right now as I'm kind of working through this one. Again, this is approximate um, symmetry, so it's almost almost symmetrical on both sides, but not quite. I think this side actually needs to be sharper. It's a bit too. Junji Ito. Junji Ito is... He has a lot of body horror. I think that's another... That's a great example of body horror. He's a fantastic uh, illustrator and writer. Um, yeah, Junji Ito's uh, got a lot of body horror. I think one of his stories that doesn't have a lot of body horror actually ended up being one of my least favorites, and that was uh, Tomi. I know a lot of people love Tomi. Tomi actually wasn't one of my favorites. Um... Tommy was just straight up, like, gore. Like, that one was, it was mostly just that. And I was like, it's a little bit boring. Um, he did a great job with uh, Hexstar Romina. I can't say the actual title, because uh, TOS. Um, but that was a great one. Um, that one was uh, Cosmic Horror. Cosmic Horror is another one that I really love. Jesse, do you think there's going to be a Little Nightmares 3? Um, you know what? I hope not. Honestly, it was great. It ended at 2. Sometimes they kind of drag it out. <clears throat> Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, it's like sometimes they kind of drag it out, right? And it's like, I find that they could have ended a bunch of games before. Little Nightmares sequel was fantastic. Um, I really want to play it. I, 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 I want to finish the first one, though, before I play the second one. Um, and I only play the game when I'm with my best friend. So she can watch me finish it. Um, we have one level left, so I'm, like, almost done. Um, but... Honestly, I think I think it's great that it... I think it should just end at two. I don't want them to drag out the series and it get really stale. I'm back. Welcome back, Riley. Glad to have you back. Okay, let's see here. Can I fix this shadow a little bit more? I could probably make it a little bit lighter over here, actually. So it's not... Don't get slow on me, Betty Bang. Come on. Because it won't be as intense the farther away that you are. So it'll be a little bit lighter over here. Proximity changes the intensity of your... of your shadows, right? You ever notice how... Even if a plane is passing over you, it doesn't cast a shadow, and that's just because its proximity is so far away that it won't create a shadow. Wait. Whoopsies. Hopefully that didn't pick up. My whole computer kind of did a funky thing for a second. Um, hopefully that didn't pick up within the stream itself. <laughs> I can probably fix this door with a little bit. That's actually... Hmm. 
liking it. That feels a little bit more natural. I actually might want shadows coming from that side too. Okay. Okay. There we go. Dimension! Gives it a bit more of that for me. Gives you a bit more of that space compared to it just being a flat color. I'll probably put an overlay layer over all this as well. Just to get my, my color balance corrected a little bit more. I'm going to switch this back to tiles as well so I need my overlay of my tiles. I don't recall the title, but the one Junji Ito did about the holes in the mountains was rad. Yes, that was a good one. That's, um, the relief of something or other. The... Give me a second. Uh... Ah, sorry, my bad. The Enigma of Amigata Fault. That's a great one. Stream is fine, no problem. Okay, excellent. Um... Yeah, that's a great one. The Enigma of Ami 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 got a fault. Yeah, because I'm like, what's the what's the mountain term? I know there's a mountain term in there because <laughs> it's in a mountain. Yeah, that's a great one. That's one of my favorites as well. Sorry, give me a second. All right, epic. Epic, epic style. Okay. I am actually gonna have to create a new layer for the tiles. Tiles take me a while. Tiles are one that I know take me a long time. So that's why I'm kind of, I saved them for last. Not only do they take me a while. Let's change this to multiply. Not only do they take me a while, but they have a specific technique that I use in order for them to feel 3D. And it's like, it's easy to do if it's cell shaded. This one is not cell shaded. So this one's gonna take me a bit longer and that's why I've left myself a good 22 minutes to do them. Cause I know it's gonna take me a while. Multiply layers are your best friend. I just hope you know that. I'm, I'm telling you that right now. Multiply layers are the best. Multiply and overlay are the ones that I think are like the best. Let's fix this. All right, correction, fine. So I'm not trying to get these tiles perfect. I'm trying to get them. Give me a gen let them have give me a general idea. So things will recede as you go farther into perspective, right? We've done a perspective stream, but I'll kind of go over it again. So things as you when you draw them, right, they'll recede as they go farther back into space. That's, a, that's the case with these tiles, right? Because the spaces between them should get larger as they come closer to you, right? And that creates that sense of it should go farther back. Should I read it? Yes, it's a really short read, actually. It'll take you, like, maybe, like, less than 10 minutes. It's a great one. It's one of his, like, short stories, similar to, like, the, the hot air balloon faces. It's a great one. 
or like the I don't remember the name of this one, but it's it's one of his more gross ones. Uh, it was a uh, I don't remember the name, but it was the one where it was like the family. It was a family, and they owned a uh let me sorry let me work just down real quick um this family owned a like a pork shop like a like a like a meat shop or a meat um like a restaurant and like you know what if i tell you the whole thing it's gonna spoil it so i i'd recommend you just read it it's <laughs> i don't remember the name of it but if you look up like junji ito meat shop you'll probably find it at some point or like meat restaurant Something like that. It was a really good one. That one, that one gave me the heebie-jeebies. That one made my skin crawl. Really good. Really gross. <laughs> that one made me feel gross. You know that a horror thing is good if it makes you feel gross. One that's actually one of my favorites that actually that isn't really a favorite of a lot of people was Gyo. I loved Gyo. That was the one with like the walking fish. That one was also pretty gross. That one made me feel pretty gross. Um, not as gross as the, the meat shop one, but that was a good one. A really, really good one. Gyo is one of his longer stories. I have a physical copy of it. Um, really, really good. I like that one a lot. Yeah, tiles are really tough. I'm gonna have to like constantly be zooming in and out of them just so I can like try to get them right. And I'm probably gonna get really quiet sometimes because I'm gonna have to like think. <laughs> For where I should go for this lighting. Cause I'm gonna need a section as well for the bounce light as well. Because Kirby has a bit of bounce light on him. He's got a bit of that blue bounce light. So I've got to... I've got to emulate that within the other surrounding area as well. Or else it'll feel randomly placed. Which you don't want, right? Should be deliberate. So I've got to place it on the other sides of these tiles as well. So that's that was a very light kind of blue. Like a pale blue. Just going to have that in there. So it'll bring some of that bounce light back in. But only with the areas with like a heavy amount of shadow because this bounce light wouldn't really show up on the areas with a lot of light, I don't think. It might show up slightly, but not like a crazy amount. Because of how soft everything is, it gives it... Because I'm also working with a single brush, Everything does kind of feel like the same texture, which is unfortunate, um, but what can you do? <laughs> I only got a couple hours to work on this one.
Come on, Medibang. You can catch up. Oh, let me turn. Why is my correction still on? Let's turn that off. I don't need that. Not for color. There we go. Goodness. Sitting here talking to my program. You can do it. Come on. <laughs> you can move on. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. And this one will have a little bit of just regular light as well. Just to give back a bit of that form. Yeah, tiles are like a great way to make something appear a little bit more 3D. It's a really good strategy. It, like 99% of the time always looks good. It's like the best. It creates another sense of 3D-ness. It gives you back that those 3D forms that you kind of lose within a piece like this that feels a little bit more flat. But it gives it back to you a little bit, which is nice with, with tiles. So like whenever I have like a piece that's kind of like this, it's a little more flat. I'm like, okay, I better add tiles or something. <laughs> it's like, I better make it tiled. It's a pretty good strategy. It's one of my favorites. Huh. 47 minutes left, huh? I could probably refine this a little bit more then. I don't think this is Kirby. It needs a new name. How would I do the shine, like the, the texture? Um, the thing with anything shiny is that it's, anything that's shiny will reflect, reflect light a little bit better. So what you're gonna have to do is your, um, it bounces light a little bit better. So what you're gonna do is your shines, same with how you draw eyes, right? Your highlights are gonna be a lot, like eyes are metal. Your highlights are gonna be a lot more pronounced and they're gonna be a lot more sharp. Um, so you're not going to blend as much if you want that flair of realism to it, um, which I think is the best way to approach that genre. Um, there's two ways that I think that, uh, like, my, take everything that I say with a grain of salt, right? Art is very subjective. Um, there's two ways that I really like the way that that genre is approached, and it's either when it's, like, extremely cartoony or extremely um realistic the realistic one obviously a lot harder to do um both most, th most things that are shiny let's say that i had like a droplet of water i'm gonna use a new layer for this let's say that i had a droplet of water here let's make it follow the lines right it's like if i had a drop of water my light source is coming from up here so i'd have a nice strong center of light here which might fade out over the sides the edges are going to be blending into the center as well so it's not a perfect edge you'll be able to see the shadow through it as well so you'll be able to see that shadow underneath this droplet of water as well on the outer edges of it. Notice how nothing touches kind of the edges. It gives it a nice circular feeling. And then if there's bounce light, then that's also gonna be very sharp in the back here. Maybe not as light, but it's gonna be there. Maybe a little bit brighter. But it's going to be a lot sharper. 
See if you can translate that with, say, like, blood or whatever. You'll have to know your, um, oh my god. You're gonna have to know your color theory pretty well, basically. Add highlights with oranges, add your shadows with purples. That tends to be your best strategy when it comes to shading the forbidden red substance. Welcome back. Yes, this is Kirby possessed by evil demon frog is seeing the acclaimed Kirby right back at you, anime. Yes. Oh my goodness, I forgot the knife. That's what I forgot. Okay, let's add the knife in there. Excellent. So I got some something to add back in there. Beautiful. Okay, thanks. No worries. Yeah, it's tough. The textural stuff. Art gets harder as you get older, not only because, like, you're becoming more skilled and, like, you're understanding things better, but also because, like... <laughs> also because, like, there's a lot more that you start to think about as you get... as you become a more seasoned artist. Like, now you're worried about, like, oh, there's, like, there's textural differences. Now there's balance that I gotta worry about, and there's, like, you know, all that fun jazz, a lot of things. What you gotta worry about? Knife time, knife time. This kind of throws off his balance in the main thing, if I use a cleaver. Alright, we'll stick with a normal kitchen knife. Whatever. <laughs> he had a normal kitchen knife in the anime, so I guess this is more accurate anyway. Oh, Kirby ate it. The frog? No, no, no. The frog, what happens is, like, Kirby's just kind of by a lake. And then the frog, like, hops onto his back. Like, Kirby screams for a little bit, and then the frog, like, absorbs into his skin. And then Kirby's like, and then he starts to go, he starts to get a little unhinged for the rest of the episode. <laughs> Sorry, my voice cracked a lot right there. Um, A good time. It was a good time watching that episode. But yeah, when I was younger, it wasn't really one of my favorites. And then as I got older, I'm like, oh no, that episode ruled. That was a good one. <laughs> to be honest though, to be fair, I was never like, none of the episodes, I didn't dislike any of the episodes. I loved them all. That's my bias, is that I loved all of the Kirby Right Back at you episodes. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm trying to see how this one would work because it's a knife so it's shinier it should reflect some of that bounce light I'm trying to figure out how I would do that So there's a divot there. Constantly zooming back in and out just to check how my forms appear. That's actually not too bad. Oh, what's this? Be hey, funny if it was a butter knife. Nope, it was a giant. It was a giant kitchen knife that he picked up. Grandma, finish your Halloween costume. You send the picture on Discord. I'll probably send my Halloween costume picture on Discord once I actually complete it. I still need to sew my tail, but that's going to be a fun time as well. Any hey, y'all dress up in dressing up for Halloween as well? Dressing up is the best thing. I don't I don't care how old you are. Dressing up is like the best thing ever. I'm so sad. Like I didn't dress up last year, and it's the first year I I didn't dress up at all, and I was like. Bruh. It's like, now I have to dress up this year, and I'm absolutely doing it. I don't care how old you are. Dressing up for Halloween is the best thing ever.
people who don't dress up for Halloween because they say it's for kids don't know how to have fun anymore. They've lost their joy. I'm joking. That's a joke. <laughs> Oops. When did that happen? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. You forgot the coolest detail in your warrior cat OC? Just add it back in. The only costume I need is my skeleton pajamas. You know what? Valid. That's valid. I have a skeleton sweater. Like a, like a, it's like a rib cage. It's like the, the one thing that I still wear from Hot Topic. It's the best. It's like knit, so it's like nice and comfy as well. I think I wore that on October 1st. And I was like, guys, we gotta celebrate Halloween the 1st. <laughs> Okay, let's add the form back in here as well. And there's always like a little bolt here. probably make these eyes a little bit more intense. Oh, they're not even full, like, got you. Yeah, this gives them a bit more dimension. When you have just something that's straight red, add a little bit of orange to it. It'll actually give it a nice extra, like, oomph, I guess. It's the best way I can describe it. With onomatopoeias. <laughs> It'll give it a nice extra dimension. That's a bit There we go. That's good. <laughs> English. Um... Yeah, it'll give it a nice extra bump of the color. Like, it probably looks great just as the straight red as well, but giving it that bit of orange will give your red a lot more dimension, especially if you want to add some, like, extra kind of glow to it. Let's actually move it over to here. And this gives it a bit of extra push to the color. It gives it a bit of extra dimension. Even though it's subtle, like if you take it away, you'll notice it. It gives it a nice, yeah, that gives it a bit more of like a Halloween-y kind of glow. You know what I mean? Your eyes directly kind of go towards it. Yes, yes. Good, good, good. Oh, great timing. Thank you. Okay. Okay, one last little, couple little last details and then we'll be good to go. Color's really important. I have one of my classes that I thought I would think would be really boring, but it's actually really interesting. It's the class where like, we have to read every single week. It's a, they, he gives us a reading in our textbook every single week. But I am like totally okay with reading it because it's always like more interesting than the time before. Um, it's color theory. It's very, very harsh color theory. So like not only is it like just like learning how to blend colors and how to use them, but it's also the scientific aspect of color. And it's like, I thought I'd be really bored. It's so interesting. It's like crazy interesting. And I was like, uh, the most recent lesson that I read was... Uh, Chevrel's rule of color interaction that was so cool that was so cool like reading about that and I was like yo that makes sense and it's like it tells you how to use colors it like tells you the kind of the scientific reason um why when you place uh colors together how they work and how they don't work um like what happens to them and like you know when you have two complementary colors uh let's use the RGB complementary colors so that's Sorry for your eyes. So let's say if I had like this red. And then in the center, with RGB, these are complementary colors. If I had this red and then cyan was in the center, 
kind of hurts, doesn't it? <laughs> um, but you notice if you kind of look at it for a while or if you kind of look away a bit, the colors kind of shudder when they're on each other. It kind of feels like like the area right between them, it looks black. Or like it, it, if you blink a little bit, it kind of looks like you're getting flashbanged. <laughs> that has a name. I'll never remember it, but it has a name. There's a reason why that happens. Um, oh, man. I don't remember the name. It says in my textbook, but I remember that there's like a whole reason for that. Um, yeah, sometimes you'll have different hue shifts, even though it looks like the same color based on the surrounding color, you may have to change the initial color just to make it look the same. That's, uh, called like the rule of subtraction within Chevrolet's color interaction. Really cool stuff. Like really, really cool stuff. I always, I, I always enjoy reading about it. I need to, I need to like say thank you to my prof at some point just because like i have another textbook that's like crazy boring so <laughs> this one's like every time i read it i'm like oh something new to learn um i think i should thank him at some point but yeah okay let's merge these two down because i just started using them and let's i can take away the knife anytime i want to oh no i edited that yeah okay let's merge, merge these then it's not like i was going to do anything with them anyway. Look at that. Look at that difference. That's called rendering. All right. That's going to do it for this stream. Thank you so, so much for joining y'all. Um, This is a fun one. I like illustrating this one a lot. Um, yeah, this is a really, really fun stream. Um, Next week. What are we doing next week? Oh, that's right. Next week, because it's close to Halloween, we're going to be doing character design or creature design. That's what we're going to be doing. Um, we're going to be going over monster design, creature design, all that fun jazz. Um, I'll ask if I can go full tilt on that one. <laughs> I don't think I can, um, just for the sake of family friendliness or whatever. Um, but I'll ask if I can go full tilt, um, with this next one. Um, but yeah, <laughs> the most disappointing part of the stream is when it ends off. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for joining y'all again if you didn't know anything about the studio um we are not just an art studio or we're not just a youtube channel we're also an art studio so if you'd like to check out the classes that we offer i am one of the instructors um check out the classes that we offer on our website um winter camps are coming up soon so if you'd like to enroll in any of those i'm going to be teaching a week of illustration so pretty intensive illustration um so if you'd like to join it on that feel free to do so or oh, i just noticed one of the tiles i'm going to edit afterwards um <laughs> So if you'd like to check out the classes that we offer, be sure to do so. Um, this file that you see in front of you, both of them, the one where we actually learned about balance and the one that I just finished rendering out, those are going to be available on our Discord. So if you'd like to join our Discord um, to download the JPEGs, keep them to, to study off of them, feel free to do so. Um, but if you'd like all my layers, layers that are available within this piece, and the layers that are available in a bunch of other stream illustrations, be sure to join our Patreon for as little as $5 a month you can get my working files and two dollars a month gets you um behind the scenes stuff for thank you Amos. but if you'd like my working files it's five dollars a month um but yeah thanks so so much for joining y'all um and i'll see you next week Bye bye